So let's do a, a short forecast on uh, how urban greening uh, can also help uh, provide benefits for health. Um, here is a, a, a schematic showing various ways in which cities are being thought of, uh, just in terms of greening. So here is a green wall, very nice, green roof, uh, wildflower verge, uh, Natura 2000 forest, hedge groves, biodiversity rich business park, beehives, multifunctional farming, uh, reed bed, fish ladder, wildlife overpass. Uh, obviously there is renewable energy wind uh, mills back here and uh, solar energy as well but th the idea is that there are also ways in which the uh, flooding and other impacts of uh, uh, human activity uh, leading to extreme events can be reduced for example uh, the same amount of rain in an urban area would produce uh, floods because of all the paved areas but permeable pavers, rain gardens and these kind of uh, greenery here would reduce the floods as well as uh, runoff and pollution of coastal waters and so on. Of course they have uh, indirect co-benefits of health in terms of harmful algal blooms, pathogens uh, and so on and multifunctional farming embedded within uh, urban centers uh, also other details like mixed use uh, neighborhoods where people can reduce commuting to work, uh, com uh, school bus travels, uh, green areas, well-being and so on and so forth, right? So potential components of a green infrastructure include core areas of high biodiversity value such uh, which act as hubs for uh, green initiatives such as protected area like Natura 2000 sites, that's kind of a, a, a protocol that's been adopted. Core areas are site protected areas containing large healthy functioning ecosystems like the fish ladder that we uh, mentioned. Restored habitats that help reconnect or enhance existing natural areas such as uh, a restored uh, reed bed or wildflower meadow. Uh, natural features acting as wild corridors, wildlife corridors or stepping stones like small watercourses, ponds, hedge groves, uh, woodland strips and so on. Artificial features that enhance ecosystem services or assist wildlife movement such as uh, eco ducts or eco bridges, fish ladders or green roofs. Uh, buffer zones that are managed sustainably and help improve general ecological quality and permeability of landscape to biodiversity, for example wildlife friendly farming. Multifunctional zones where, oops, where uh, compatible land users can join forces to create land management combinations that support multiple land users in the same spatial area. Uh, example food production and recreation okay so vertical farming and generally uh, vegetation uh, in urban areas including a building such as this one which looks impressively green in terms of the number of uh, gardens on balconies and can you imagine where this is this is actually in Milan Italy which is uh, a big city and uh, quite a commercial city in terms of fashion industry and manufacturing and so on and you can see there's a nice example of course a lot of the other buildings are traditional old buildings but still uh, this is becoming very common if you visit places like uh, Singapore especially or even many places across uh, India uh, Europe and so on uh, such buildings and a roof, uh, balcony gardens, rooftop gardens and green roofs are now quite common. Okay, So that also obviously mitigates energy use in the buildings. Uh, in terms of mitigation strategy then, urban forestry is of course one, school and community gardens and urban agriculture which is quite big now. 
and parks and open spaces. Um, there are nice examples even from cities like Bogota, Colombia and places in Brazil which have combined green spaces with public transportation, bike lanes uh, and uh, these kind of natural green spaces uh, to provide incredible amount of reductions in emissions, energy use and remember in urban areas we found that things like heat waves can affect uh, neighborhood level uh, dif can create neighborhood level disparities in terms of impacts and this is also part of the solution to reducing those kind of uh, health impacts so urban forestry would lead to decrease in particulate matter decrease in air pollution shading reduce energy use decrease flood risks increase groundwater recharge and filter water Lots of articles have recently come out showing that because the heat wave, number of heat waves are increasing not only in the tropics but also at mid latitudes like in the US and Europe, trees are the simplest way to provide shade and temporary shelter and mitigation against heat waves in especially in poor neighborhoods which cannot afford air conditioning and remember air conditioning is right now not a very good idea for global warming because while it's a quick adaptation to heat waves and warming it produces enormous amount of HFCs which are very powerful uh, greenhouse gases and replacements for HFCs are going to happen in the next 10 to 15 years depending on whether it's a rich country or a developing country okay health impacts of urban forestry include decrease in premature mortality decrease cardiovascular disease respiratory disease and asthma asthma is a big problem in urban centers even in countries like India where schools don't have enough spaces for kids to play outside anymore and traffic pollution is seriously combining with um, greenhouse gases and other dust and aerosols to produce uh, asthma morbidity that's growing among the young and the old. Uh, decrease heat risk, reduce fuel poverty and increase drought and flood resilience in urban centers. Okay? School and community gardens and urban agriculture lead to increase uh, in healthy food access increase nutritional awareness and health wise they can decrease obesity decrease cardiovascular disease and diabetes which always comes up and increase social capital okay parks and open spaces of course there is space for activity created and venues for social engagement um, increase physical activity and increase social capital okay we mentioned loneliness as an epidemic before these can actually reduce the loneliness epidemic especially when they are pet friendly like for uh, dogs which uh, often bring people together dog owners always like to meet up hang together let the dogs play while they socialize okay these kinds of co-benefits are great from uh, urban greening uh, we will look at the energy sector and make a couple of uh, additional points about uh, mitigation and health co-benefits before we close out this chapter. Okay, so this is about urban sector and uh, urban greening and its co-benefits on health. Okay, I decided to add a few slides here. Uh, I hope it works because I recorded the podcast and then I'm inserting these uh, at the end. Um, this is from the Tree Hugger uh, website that uh, lists 10 things that make a great green city. This is a nice shot of uh, New York Central Park uh, uh, which serves the same purpose for which it was developed in the 19th century as a green retreat in the busy city. Still remains one of the most popular places for uh, being outdoors, uh, music, drama, uh, restaurants, get-togethers, playing, etc., etc., concerts, and so on. Um, so plenty full of parks, obvious uh, as it could be in terms of its uh, impact on making a city green and the health effects that come with it. 
uh, efficient public transportation. There's m there are many examples of cities with efficient public transportation that become greener by taking away parking lots, by reducing uh, roads, by uh, adjusting uh, even development into greener uh, places by uh, exploiting the efficient public transportation which goes with uh, the quality uh, public space idea where uh, you can ride in uh, a bus or a metro and then you have plenty of place where you can uh, sit and eat outside uh, street music, people uh, walking around, sitting around enjoying a cup of coffee with not much traffic. There is a uh, tunnel going down here that goes to a metro for example. Uh, bike lanes, again a no-brainer. Even a city like New York tries to have uh, bike lanes but obviously traffic is not always friendly and bike accidents uh, with vehicles are quite common and can be dangerous but bike lanes uh, the crazy cities like Denmark, uh, Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, people are fanatic about their bike lanes and they get priorities in terms of synchronized traffic lights, uh, cross uh, walks, this and that. Uh, in fact, if tourists wander into bike lanes, uh, the Danish get really, really angry as well. But the impacts of biking active transportation on health is also something we've already uh, discussed. Uh, high profile green buildings uh, tend to attract uh, visitors uh, to learn about technology awareness, uh, looking at the design for lighting, for energy use, for water re recycling and so on and so forth which can uh, really uh, lead to uh, additional interests in green buildings and in general uh, looking for improving their own uh, house as well. Uh, comprehensive recycling and composting programs. San Diego does a good job of this uh, with uh, models of how community gardens uh, can be combined with composting, uh, methane production, energy uh, production, and so on and so forth. So this is environmentally friendly uh, and reduces waste and leads to recycling and so on. Uh, makes the city greener, of course. Um, mixed use uh, and infill development. Uh, we mentioned this briefly where if you are living close to work, uh, commuting goes down, uh, schools nearby, uh, shopping nearby, entertainment nearby, maybe parks nearby, basically reduces the entire land use uh, pressure and makes for a greener city for uh, sure. Uh, green leadership, of course, politics has to play a role in it and uh, as we know, uh, US is struggling a lot with uh, climate action but slowly it's changing uh, with the new admi administration as well as uh, even conservatives realizing that uh, with all the extreme events uh, going on the impacts of climate change have become a little too obvious to ignore at this point. Uh, they are trying to come up with their own ideas on climate action. Smart energy policies, how to combine urban uh, landscape with um, uh, energy policies for uh, renewables and if you go to suburbia for example putting up land mill, uh, a windmill in your backyard uh, can be against the rules because they say it makes noise, it tends to reduce property value and so on and so forth but cities may provide a friendlier environment to uh, integrate renewables into uh, urban design and this is a broader category of uh, called good green fund where farmers markets which tend to be very popular in cities like Washington DC uh, which brings out people uh, seeking good healthy food which of course help, uh, helps uh, health uh, which is what we are focused on but also uh, can reduce uh, food miles and carbon footprint when done uh, properly in terms of where uh, the uh, farmers markets, uh, where are they coming from, how far are they transporting things and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's uh, leave it here. Uh, this is coming at the end of uh, showing the benefits but it doesn't matter. I think it's worth adding here.